All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 22. And in this lesson, we're gonna be uh, having our students take care of some special cases when they're adding and subtracting, uh, specifically when they're dealing with whole numbers. So we're gonna be talking about adding to whole numbers and subtracting from whole numbers. Uh, and at this point, uh, we're gonna be using visual models, tape diagrams, and number lines to help students develop an understanding of what's going on and eventually, eventually they will, students will internalize that and they'll be able to do it in their head. But at this point, we're gonna draw pictures to make things uh, more comprehensible. So let's get started. So these problems are not hard. They're just different from the way us parents and teachers were taught when we were kids. So, uh, and that's the point of that is because we're trying to show these intermediary steps so that students can develop understanding as opposed to the way we learned when we were just told rules or things were just, we were supposed to assume certain things. And, and so this is a little uh, unique compared to the way we were taught. So let's do problem A right here. So the way we would draw the tape diagram is we would draw two. So this is our tape diagram to represent two. Now because, and if I wanted to be really explicit, I could call them ones, right? So one plus one is two. Now to add an additional fourth we don't know how big of a piece that is supposed to be until we cut these guys into fourths. So let's cut one of these into fourths, or we could cut them both into fourths. It doesn't really matter. But now we know that this is how big a fourth is. So if I wanted to add in this one more fourth right here, I would draw a shape that is about the same length or same size as these fourths right here. So what I've just drawn is I have just drawn two and a fourth. So that's what my model is going to look like. And so this is two and a fourth. And so if we wanted to complete the number sentence right here, we would put two and a fourth. The same idea, only now with subtraction. So let's do problem uh, C. So if we wanted to draw two, we would draw a tape diagram of any length, cut it into two pieces. So that's one right here, and this is one right here. Now, if we wanted to cut off or subtract off a fifth, what we would need to do is take one or both of these, it doesn't really matter, and cut it into five equal sized pieces the best you can. And uh, that subtract fifth, a fifth means just kind of what it says, is take off one of those fifths. So what are we left with? Well, we're certainly left, left with less than two. So what do we have left? Well, we still have the one, but what do we have over here? We have four fifths. So our answer is one and four fifths. So that's how we represent it with a tape diagram. Now here, same kind of idea, but now they're asking us to use a number bond in order to um, solve the problem. They're also asking us to draw it on, an, on a number line. So let's take a look at this. Now, to be honest, um, it doesn't really matter if students do the number bond first or the number line first. So parents and teachers, let your students decide. Do they want to do the number bond first like this, or do they want to do the number line first? It, it doesn't matter. So anyway, I will follow Eureka Math's lead over here, and I will take that 8 minus 5 sixths, and I will decompose eight to be seven wholes and six sixths. And now when we take that six sixths and subtract five sixths, we're gonna end up with one sixth plus the seven that we have right here. And that is our final answer, which is seven and one sixth. And how did we get that? Well, we added the seven plus the one-sixth, all right? Now, how would we re record that on a number line? Because that's what we're supposed to do. So the idea is 
we are we don't need to draw the entire number line starting at 0 we can have 8 and if we wanted to you could go down here and parents and teachers eventually the students are going to recognize oh we only needed this part of the number line but if students need a little extra boost a little lower plus a little higher they're allowed to have that now the idea is how do we start with 8 and go backwards 5 sixths because that's what that says well we're gonna have to cut this interval right here into six equal sized pieces. So I'm going to cut it in half and then cut each half into three pieces. And so we now have six equal sized pieces, roughly. <laughs> I didn't draw it very well. Um, uh, we now have sixths. So now I can go backwards five sixths. I could go one, two, three, four, five sixths. So I just went backwards. If I wanted to do it in one step, I could just do it like that. So I just went backwards five sixths. Now where are we? We ended up right here. So I ended up at right here is seven holes because that's this seven. Plus we went one extra piece over. So that's seven and one sixth. And that's our answer. Of course, we knew that right up here from our number bond. So we have the number bond way of thinking about this problem and we have a number line way of thinking about this problem. Parents and teachers, you feel free to let your students kind of start to develop a personal favorite because uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they all lead towards kind of a standard organized algorithm uh, that students can actually do in their head. Last problems for this video. Uh, complete the subtraction sentences. Now we're only using number bonds, so we're really kind of getting away from the visual models, like the number line and the tape diagrams, and now we are really kind of turning this into just plain old numbers. So if we were to take six and decompose it, we would get four and, I mean five and four-fourths because that's equal to six. Now, why did I choose four-fourths? Why didn't I choose three-thirds or seven-sevenths? Well, I chose four-fourths because our fraction right here is one-fourth, and that's why. And so now we are ready to subtract four-fourths minus one-fourth. That gives us three-fourths plus the five that we already have. So our answer is five and three-fourths. Oh, let's see. We want to do one more. Sure, let's do D. No, I don't. Let's not do D because it has this. It starts with a six as well. Let's do. Oh, let's do B. Okay. So, if we want to do seven minus a little fraction, so we're gonna first we're gonna decompose that seven to be six and ten tenths. Now we can subtract. So ten tenths minus two tenths is eight tenths plus the six we had left over at the beginning. And so our answer is six and eight tenths. Teachers, if your students want to simplify that and change it to six and four fifths, they're absolutely welcome to. But right now we're perfectly happy with six and eight tenths. And that wraps up fourth grade, module five, lesson 22. Little special cases when we're dealing with subtracting from one hole or adding to one hole. We're using visual models, but we're also kind of leading towards that standard algorithm.